Oh, wait. Okay. We're recording now. There you go. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first podcast from Gen Z Media. My name is Rahul Ayer, and I'm on the podcast production team and an ed- editor in the Tallahassee branch of the Gen Z organization. Uh, my name is Omar Atari, and I'm a podcast editor from the parent chapter of Gen Z. Um, my name is Curtis Chen, and I'm the content manager of the Michigan branch of Gen Z. My name is Annika Mather, and I'm the Connecticut chapter manager and podcast manager of Gen Z Media. My name is Sophia Escobar, and I am uh, the Gen Z Miami branch director of content development and publishing. My name is Abby Mullins, and I'm the senior video producer for the Connecticut branch of Gen Z Media. Hi, my name is Lauren Scarpa, and I'm a content developer in Connecticut. Today, we are going to be talking about Black History Month and how it impacts our generation. So our first question is, what is Black History Month and why is it important? Black History Month was created in order to celebrate the history of Black people as they're often not showcased in history books. It's very important because this month helps promote different people who may not be taught or known about if it wasn't for this month. As someone who really values education and learning, I think that Black History Month is another way to help educate yourself about different people and things that you may have never been exposed to before. Black History Month is celebrated in February as February is the birthday month of two important figures who helped advance civil rights. Abraham Lincoln on February 12th, who issued the Emancipation Proclamation that freed enslaved people in the South during the Civil War, and Frederick Douglass on February 20th, an escaped slave turned abolitionist who led the abolitionist movement in New York and Massachusetts and was well known for his speeches. Black History Month is so important because it allows Black heritage and culture to be shared among all types of people and better inform them of things they may have been unaware of. I would also like to add that Black History Month is also celebrated in Canada, the UK, and the Netherlands. But in Europe, Black History Month takes place in October instead of February. Black History Month is also very important in celebrating the accomplishments of Black people, whether that be a Black activist, science, celebrity, etc. Black History Month is important as the history of Black people is part of our history too, and we need to learn about the mistakes of the past so we can pave the way for a better future that will hopefully eliminate racism soon. Speaking of history, the history of how Black History Month came to be is in 1926, Carter G. Woodson, a historian from Harvard, created a National Negro History Week to celebrate the achievements of Black Americans, which eventually developed into the whole month of February. Woodson created this week to get Americans to see that their racist stereotypes about Black people are entirely false. Pia Gwai, who wasn't able to make it Um, here today says that Black History Month is so important because it allows the country to respect African Americans in the United States and demonstrate equality. Black Americans have gone down a long and hard road in order to gain the rights that they have today. It is important that we recognize the process that was made and show appreciation for all different cultures and backgrounds of people in the United States. Um, Black History Month to me is important because it uh, allows the remembrance of important events and people in history. Uh, My experience of Black History Month is the display of significant accomplishments that African American people have done. Um, It is used to educate children too. For example, uh, in elementary school, I did a project on George Washington Carver, an agricultural scientist that developed many peanut products for everyone. Our next question is, what are some forms of media, such as books, movies, and TV shows that relate to Black History Month? Poems by Maya Angelou are some of the pieces of literature that I really enjoy reading. I was introduced to Maya Angelou and her works by my English teacher in the ninth grade. Two years before, in seventh grade, I really started to enjoy reading and writing poetry, and it was a great outlet for me to express different thoughts and emotions that I was feeling. After realizing how much I really enjoyed poetry, reading Maya Angelou's works was something that I really began to appreciate. Her her works that are my favorites um, are The Caged Bird and I Still Rise, but there are many other poems that she wrote that I also really like to read. Maya Angelou was a civil rights activist and she was a poet and memoirist. Her works are so powerful and I would encourage anyone to try and read them in order to see if you are interested in them. Angelou's involvement in history is something that should be learned by other people too. One book that I read for English class, which related to Black History Month is Their Eyes Watching God. This book is about a black woman named Janie as she tells her friends the story of her life. 
The book, take the book takes place in Florida in the early 1900s, and parts of the book take place in Neatonville, which was one of the first self-governing Black communities. Janie's mother was raped at 17 years old, and then Janie was raised by her grandmother. Janie is partially white, but she identifies with the Black community as she's not accepted by white people. Throughout the novel, she marries a few different men, two of which are controlling, before she finally realizes her true identity as a strong, independent woman. One part that stuck out to me in this book was when Janie was talking to a woman named Mrs. Turner. Mrs. Turner was half Black and half white, but she was more white passing, and all of her features she was proud of were the ones that she thought looked whiter. In fact, Mrs. Turner was racist against Black people, and she wanted to separate herself from the Black community as much as possible. She even wanted Janie to do the same. Through this scene, the novel was able to show the racism of the time period as someone who is partially Black is racist against Black people. In addition, the story shows the hardships of Black people during the early 1900s, as Janie's nanny works for a white family and lives in a small house in their backyard, so all nanny wanted for Janie was to marry rich. It also shows the hardships of many poor, poor Black citizens in Eatonville. Uh, Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart is an amazing piece detailing the lives of Africans living their daily life as European, um, I guess, their European countries' armies began to venture into Africa for resources. Uh, the book follows a tribesman, a Nigerian tribesman, Akonkwo, throughout his daily life in the months, le months leading up to and during the infiltration of Europeans into the region. The book has beautiful pacing and an engaging story that shows a rare perspective of imperial imperialism from the standpoint of tribal Africans, and I recommend it to anyone, honestly. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas is about a young teenager who witnesses her friend being shot by the police and her struggle to raise her voice and speak out about it. The book really put into perspective for me how police brutality can affect the Black community and how hard it can be to speak up. Despite the book being more about modern day issues, it still highlights an important part of Black history. Tia says Native Son is a book written by Richard Wright. The book highlights the struggles of, black, of a young Black boy in America and different struggles that he faces each day. The book touches on the idea of police brutality towards African Americans and the main characters fight for equality among different races. Um, in middle school, I was introduced to the movie Hidden Figures. Uh, the movie displayed the achievements and struggles of three African American women working at NASA during a time where many minorities were treated unfairly. Our next question is, Black History Month is becoming increasingly more important in the American education system. What does your school do to acknowledge Black History Month and educate you and your classmates? I think my school does a really good job in promoting Black History Month and teaching, uh, and it teaches its students well about it. Although during COVID, it's been hard for the students or to be able to re be reached by all of the, um, by the school. Usually my teachers teach about Black history, even when it's not Black History Month. This includes literature and history mostly, where teachers will talk about different pieces of literature that promote Black authors and Black history. And uh, well, I remember learning all about the civil rights movement in elementary social studies classes. And then now during high school, learning about modern issues prevalent, uh, sorry, prevalent in American society that affects Black communities. Uh, and while he's never directly mentioned Black History Month, my AP uh, English language teacher likes to bring up Black history and discuss it with us. Additionally, my AP US uh, history teacher discusses prominent Black uh, leaders per each time period in order to keep US history not so centered on white America and have more representation in the entirety of, of American history. Um, I know I will discuss it more later, but my civics class went fairly in depth on the civil rights movement and Black activism for the month of February. In addition, my intro to psychology teacher has put a quote from a famous Black person on the smart board every day. She has also given us a little bit of history on some Black people who made major discoveries or advancements in the fields of psychology. Over the course of the month, one of my teachers leaves up a slide when you first join class showcasing a person influential in some way in the civil rights movement. I think this is a really good way of informing students about Black history as there's nothing to do when you first join class and it's really interesting to learn about someone new that I've never heard of before. Tia says, my school is able to acknowledge Black History Month by talking about all of the prominent African American figures in society that are still fighting for equality. Movement and how it has developed over time, or sorry. In my civics class, we went into a detailed timeline about this civil rights movement and how it developed over time. 
We also discussed the fight for equal rights in today's society and how Black History Month has developed over the years. Um, my school does a good job at acknowledging Black History Month. Uh, my math teacher has taught about African Americans, uh, African American mathematicians. In my American literature class, we have learned about the discrimination um, of African Americans through hurtful actions and writing like uh, blackface. At my school during the morning announcements, um, the anchors discuss a black entrepreneur or scientist or anyone who has contributed to the world we live in today and why their investment was so important. Do you think your school educates students well about Black History Month? Yes, I think my school does a really good job in educating their students. Not only is Black History Month involved in the curriculum, um, but there are so many clubs and resources that can promote a caring school climate, as well as one that understands the importance of diversity and acceptance of all races and cultures. For example, the high school club Steps Think Tank, or Southington's town-wide effort to promote success, often does different activities in order to promote a more positive and educated class of students who are able to understand the perspectives of different people, including Black History Month. And kind of almost in a complete contrast to Nika, um, my school, it's actually very sad about how my school never really addresses Black History Month or really kind of any um, heritage month. And I really do think it has to do with the fact that, you know, Miami is pretty, um, homo uh, you know, we're basically all either Hispanic or some sort of immigrant. And even though there are Black Hispanics, um, I think a lot of times they're not necessarily that connected with American history, more Latin American history with like black figures over there that you never really learn about in American history. Um, but if we ever do talk about any type of black history, it's more often the like the the famous names like Carrie Tubman and uh, Frederick Douglass that you learn kind of uh, standard almost with uh, SAT classes or with uh, English classes only because they're such great works to read. Um, but we never really hear about kind of innovative innovative or um commemorable kind of black stories it's only really about black trauma like slavery or dream curl laws i come from the same school as annika and i definitely think that our school educates students well especially uh since starting next year as part of connecticut becoming the first state to require high schools to offer courses on african-american and black studies, um, they're really going to start um, improving um, the diversity within the courses, um, course options. And more students will have the opportunity to learn more about the world and become more aware of the people around them. I think my school does pretty well in educating us about black history as our history classes sometimes focus on prominent figures during the month. And every day during the month, we learn a new fact about the civil rights movement and black history. I do think that um, my school especially and all schools should make the effort to offer more classes about black history as we just touch on surface level topics like the popular figures um, instead of going more in depth. Um, I got to the same high school as Annika and Abby and I would agree that our school educates us pretty well on black history and diversity. All I would say is that I would like to see more Black educators at our school and learn about news, new events related to Black history. This year in my civic class was good because we learned about more modern Black activism that we hadn't learned before, but I'm sure there are plenty of other topics on Black history and Black activism that could be incorporated into the curriculum. Um, honestly, my school does an okay job at educating us uh, on Black history. Um, my experience on the school uh, educating students on Black history is based on the teacher. Um, there's no specific part in the curriculum uh, on Black, like on Black history. Um, it's all added in by the teacher. Um, I feel like schools should make it necessary to teach Black history in the curriculum because it's like pretty important in our history. So yeah. In the past, my school did recognize the existence of Black History Month, but nothing was done extensively to celebrate it or, you know, uh, ponder on its importance. 
and really it was just determined on what teachers you had and what they assigned. There was no school-wide type of uh, general assembly or anything like that, or there might have been, but it wouldn't, um, it would just be mentioned, not be the topic of it. But uh, this year, probably most likely due to recent events, uh, I've noticed that um, education on Black history is more standardized and there's more coverage on topics like important contributions uh, to society by Black people in history. Our next question is, in what classes is Black History Month most frequently studied or brought up? My school mostly educates students through the English and history classes where there's a lot of room to discuss about uh, people from history that relate to Black History Month. There are also clubs and activities that promote Black History Month at my school as well. Um, pretty similar to uh, Annika, you, you know, you have English classes in my school that uh, and history classes where they give you the space to actually discuss black uh, leaders and black uh, history. Uh, and lately, like I said, kind of before uh, my AP language teacher uh, has been really kind of um, stressing the importance of black history uh, uh, in his curriculum lately, the kind of books that we've read and the kind of discussions that we have relate to uh, modern day and historical uh, issues that black communities have had in American society. And it makes for a really good discussion because uh, most of my class are not black, but we are minorities. And so a lot of the things that affect them affect uh, Hispanics as well, but in a kind of less radical way, I would say. I would have to agree with Annika and Sophia. Black History Month is mostly studied in my social studies and English classes. However, I would say I definitely studied it more in US history and civics class um, compared to all my other classes. I know this year my civics class focused on Black History Month where we focus on the civil rights movement and how black artists have brought, around, have brought about change through art and music. We also looked at the history of black activism in the US right up until this year. Tia says, like previously stated, I mostly learn about Black History Month in social studies classes. For instance, when I took AP US History, we took a lot of time during the class to learn about Black History Month and talk about this topic. Similarly, in this year in civics, we went to great detail about Black history and its prevalence in our society today. Our next question is, where can you learn about Black History Month outside of school? You can learn about Black History Month through reading literature. In fact, if you go to Google right now and search up Black History Month literature, tons of suggestions will pop up about books you can read in order to become more educated about the topic. This also can help promote Black writers who may not have as big of a spotlight or reach as other authors do. Uh, and the, you know, the easiest way, like Annika said, uh, to learn about Black history is to go online or any really any social media platform and just look up related hashtags. Uh, I recommend following the Equal Justice Initiative, the Equal Justice Initiative, uh, because you know on their story and Instagram they post every single day uh, instances of racial inequality have happened in their history. Um, things that you know they're not exactly the big events that they get mentioned in. Um, in American history that make it to the textbooks because they're everyday kind of common events. I well, I wouldn't say common, but everyday events that happen that don't make it to the national uh, news channels. And I also uh, really recommend after kind of reading those different uh, stories, going on kind of the internet and looking up, uh, basically going on a Wikipedia spree uh, to look up some of these events and learn more about them if you're really curious about it. And I also really recommend, you know, there's like Annika said, there's plenty of books and movies based on black history and black stories that don't often uh, don't all the time get uh, kind of the the reach that it should be uh, get some of my personal favorites include um, kind of how Curtis mentioned um, hidden figures, uh, just mercy and I'm not your Negro. And also one of the books that we've been reading in my uh, English class right now is in between the world and me by um, Ta Nahisi Coates. Yeah, just simply scrolling through the hashtag Black History Month on Instagram provides tons of posts that highlight Black history. 
And this includes current events, work, uh, current activists working to provide more racial justice and equality, small snippets of important figures in the past who have worked toward racial, racial equality and organizations as well. And you can follow the hashtag to get more posts related to Black History Month on your feet. I like how Sophia and Abby all have really good ideas. And in addition, you can even do your own research. I find that researching on your own is always more interesting than school research. And I usually remember the information better. For research, you could research history, such as the civil rights movement or current events related to black activism. You could also research influential and important black Americans, such as Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, Maya Angelou, Amanda Gorman, Martin Luther King Jr., and more. Tia says, I agree with Lauren in saying that doing your own research is a good idea. By researching about Black History and Black History Month, you'll be able to get many different opinions and perspectives on issues relating to this topic instead of just one. Feel free to visit American or African American History Month.gov to get lots of information about Black History Month. Um, my favorite way of learning about African American history would be through physical books. Going to the library and borrowing nonfiction books is a good way to educate yourself outside of school. Our next question is, who are some important people that are related to Black History Month, but people who are part of the education as well as people to learn about? Macy Jemison, or Jemison is someone that I think everyone should be educated about. Jemison is a NASA astronaut who is the first Black woman to go to space. He, um, she was able to go to space on the spacecraft Endeavor. Although she applied to go to space in 1985, she wasn't able to since the space um, shuttle Challenger had exploded and NASA had halted any new recruits for space travel. However, after applying in 1987, she was selected to be part of the space mission and she was able to go to space. A cool fact about Jemison is that she was the first astronaut to be in a Star Trek episode since, and she, since she was featured in Next Generation's episode, Second Chances, because she was a fan of the series. I uh, recommend Brian Stevenson um, as a very important role model, especially to people who want to be involved in the local community and um, either in local or nationwide politics. Um, he works to defend uh, death row prisoners, winning a couple of Supreme Court cases in the past, including the discontinuation of uh, giving life without parole to teenage convicts. Um, additionally, there's also um, lesser known innovators such as uh, Louis Latimer, who made the carbon filaments of the early electric uh, light bulb more affordable for poor communities. Uh, and you don't often learn about him when you learn about, you know, the kind of inventions of uh, Thomas Edison. Malcolm X is a big household name when it comes to black history and the struggle for civil rights. Uh, but he's not really, um, he's taught about his existence in the civil rights movement, but he's really overshadowed by other figures in the civil rights movement. He was hated by his adversaries and even his own community because of his fiery passion he had for justice. His devotion to the movement shines most brightly in his intense speeches where he tears into the oppressors and pumps up his listeners with his rhetorical prowess. I really recommend um, the Smithsonian Channel has a video on one of his speeches. I think it's called Malcolm X gives a fiery speech at, at, in LA. Uh, I really think he's, his speeches are amazing, but I never got shown them in class. I had to do my own research for that. So. Uh, Ella Baker was one of America's lesser known yet largely impactful civil rights activists, often known as the backbone of the civil rights movement. Her desire for systematic justice was fueled when her grandmother, a slave, told her about how she was whipped for refusing to marry who her slave owner wanted her to. In the 1940s, she developed a grassroots approach to spreading the message that a society of individuals can and should exist without discrimination based on race. She later laid the framework for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which became one of the most influential organizations in the civil rights movement because of its emphasis on the importance of the right to vote for African Americans. Baker earned the name of Fundi, which is Swahili for a person who teaches the craft to the next generation. She taught people that spirit was key to the movement and through the means of relentless peaceful protest and endurance, a fair society awaited. I feel like everyone knows that Barack Obama was the first black president and Kamala Harris is the first black vice president. So I wanted to find out some other people who are the first black people to take a certain position in the government. 
In 1870, Hiram Revels from Mississippi and Joseph Rainey from South Carolina became the first African Americans to serve in Congress. Lawrence Douglas was the first elected Black governor in 1990, and he governed for Virginia. From 1968 to 1988, Richard Gordon Hatcher became the first Black mayor of a large city, which was Gary, Indiana. The first Black mayor overall in the U.S. was a mayor of a small town called Donaldsonville, Louisiana, and his name was Pierre Calice Landry. Landry was elected in 1868, and he was formerly a slave before he became an attorney, Methodist Episcopal Minister Mayor, and a state legislator of Louisiana. Madam C.J. Walker was the first, first American woman to become a self-made millionaire by selling African-American hair products in the early 1900s. After developing a scalp disorder that caused her to lose much of her hair, Walker worked to experiment with remedies and hair care treatments to better her condition. She traveled around the country advertising her products and demonstrating how to use them. With both of her parents being former slaves, Walker was able to rise up from extreme poverty among horrible circumstances and prove her worth and genius. Our final question is, what are some ways you can celebrate Black History Month? One way you can celebrate Black History Month is by supporting Black content creators, whether that be on YouTube by reading their books or even by using apps that feature them. For example, I really enjoyed the app Webtoon, which is an app that has artists and allows them to create their own virtual comics for others to read. On the app, there are many talented creators that are Black or have Black characters. Webtoon promotes their comics during this month, and I would love to I love to support them by reading their episodes. There are so many that I would recommend for you to read, but I would say that Spare, Raw, or Sunflowers for Dragons are great places to start reading. Another way to celebrate Black History Month is to support Black-owned businesses. You can search for Black-owned businesses that create any product you want to buy, such as clothes, cosmetics, hair products, etc. Plus, a lot of Black-owned businesses seem to make natural or even vegan products, which is always a plus. Another way to participate is simply by educating yourself. No, how, no matter how much you think you know, there is still plenty to learn. Find out what you know and what you don't know and try to expand your knowledge through reading articles and books and even watching YouTube videos. Even if you only take a few minutes to watch a short clip, it's still better than nothing at all. Tia says, another way you can help support Black History Month is by educating other people about it. Many people may not have heard of Black History Month um, or they might have heard of it and they don't know all the details. By talking about it with other people and offering different perspectives, then it will support the cause and encourage people to be active in the fight for equality. Thank you for listening to our podcast about Black History Month. Come back next time when we talk about another social issue that impacts our generation.